Is Linda coming tonight, Becky? Yeah, she's um, here now. Oh, okay. For some reason, hers just takes a little longer to get through the door. Okay. <laughs> Time for new internet. <laughs> broad broadband. Really broad and broadband. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what why that is, because she's been joining since the rest of you guys joined. She may have something up on her screen in another window that she needs to click on. She might have a steam powered computer or something too. you never know. Here. There she is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the Shootsbury Select Board, and today is January 12th. Is that right? Yeah. January 12th. And this is a um, uh, a special meeting, kind of an out of cycle meeting because we had um, something that we wanted to take care of um, right right away. So um, we're gonna do two things this evening. One was unexpected, but the expected one is just to make some uh, further modifications to uh, the town's COVID-19 policy for town employees. And I see Arlene Reed from the Board of Health has joined us this evening. Thank you, Arlene, for um, taking the time to, to come to the meeting. Um, as all of you are well aware, we have uh, spent quite a bit of time in trying to um, put something together that made sense out of a pretty crazy situation. You know, it evolves all the time at the federal level, and we've been evolving at the, um, at the local level too. But I think tonight we have um, been able to pretty much nail down um, all of the, the changes. We did vote um, last, was it last week now? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Julia the changes. And um, so we just have a couple more. And I know Arlene has um, been consulted um, as our lead person on COVID-19 in Shootsbury and also um, consulted with uh, folks at DPH, a state epidemiologist. So um, Becky, I don't know if you want to take the lead or um, and Arlene just be a, be a resource to us, um, just to point out the, um, the changes. Okay. Um, the I reached out to Arlene because um, of the new CDC changes and as well as um, the issue of the um, requiring an antigen test as a prerequisite for returning to work. Um, Arlene had been uncomfortable with that uh, before. We did it, but we she really dug in on the research. And um, when I called her again, with a we had a we, we were trying to figure out different situations. So, um, Arlene, I'd like you to explain uh, your reasoning. That would yeah. be wonderful. Sure. So, um, consistently, the CDC and the Department of Public Health have advised against a test requirement for return to work, particularly when most of the testing that was out there was PCR testing, because a PCR test in particular is so sensitive that it can detect little fragments of the genetic material of the virus and light up positive uh, long after a person is no longer contagious. So it can pick up on inactive fragments of that genetic material that have no ability to replicate. So no ability to cause infection. And people vary as to how long that 
persistent positive will be for them on a PCR, but it has the potential to go for three months. That's, I think it's the outer limits, but um, so uh, you really get yourself in trouble if you require a PCR test as a condition for returning to work. People can, or empl employers and schools are not advised to use a test-based strategy for return to work, but if they wish to, then they, um, they might wanna require an antigen test for return to work. Those are the rapid or so-called lateral flow tests, the ones that, you know, the fluid flows across a strip and you read it within 15 minutes. Um, those tests have a much lower likelihood of any persisting positive because they are looking for the, uh, the proteins that are on the outside of the virus itself. So if they are lighting up positive, if the person did the test correctly, it's pretty, you're pretty confident there is virus present. Um, the problem with home tests, at least, is that there is a lot of room for human error, user error. Um, and so people read them incorrectly, people may contaminate them with letting the swab touch the countertop. There's all sorts of ways that it can give an incorrect result or that person could interpret it incorrectly. Um, so um, anyway, the, the um, CDC made these changes recently um, to that the five day of strict five days of strict isolation followed by five days of strict um, masking, and they did this because their analysis of the data, even since Omicron made its appearance, is that the vast majority of transmission of this virus happens in the first few days after symptom onset. It is, and most of that between symptom onset and five days after symptom onset. It is not zero transmission between five days and 10 days. Um, but, and that's, that's why this strict mask wearing requirement is in there as another layer of protection. But they, they capped it at five days of strict isolation because they're paying attention to issues around workforce depletion, school absences, effects on mental health, and um, you know interruptions in critical infrastructure maintenance. So they're trying to hit, if you will, a sweet spot between wh um, what is, where is most of this transmission happening and when can most, not 100%, but most people return to work without uh, endangering the people around them. But this, you have to understand, this is, at this point, it is risk reduction. It is not risk elimination. So anyway, the uh, PCR test should not be required. An antigen test, if you do require it, when I called the epidemiologist to run this by them, he said to me, I, I started to explain employee situation, uh, test requirement for returning to work. And he interrupted me and he said, we would not recommend that. And um, he uh, maintained the, the, state, the, the position statement of the DPH to use a time and symptom-based strategy rather than a test-based strategy. And he gave as a point of reference um, that even in, with our most vulnerable population, so in a long-term care facility or a nursing home, for instance, um, employees, who have tested positive for COVID. In those situations, they are asked to present a negative antigen test before they go back to work. But even in that population, if they were to on day six, still get a positive antigen test, then they would stay home through day 10 and no further testing would be required of that person. They could come back after day 10. Um, but um, if an employee for out of their own volition, they went and did another test and it were positive, they still would not keep that person out at day, after day 10. That, that even in that vulnerable population, they, they don't want employees staying out 
beyond 10 days. So um, anyway, I hope that answers some of these questions that the, the current recommendations or the current advisories for a person who's tested positive for COVID is to strictly isolate for five days. If at the end of five days, they can say they've been without fever for at least 24 hours and their other symptoms have substantially improved, they can return to work and all other activities, but mask around others for uh, five more days. So a full 10 days after, after they, uh, their isolation period began. And uh, no test required. But if an organization wishes to require a test, then the most that should be required would be an antigen test and not beyond day 10. Not beyond day 10. <laughs> so the, 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 uh, the, the most important message I want to convey is that, that CDC and DPH do not recommend a test requirement for return to work. Yeah. But employers have the right to do so anyway. If you're going to do so, make it an antigen test only and don't require anything beyond day 10, regardless of what has happened with their testing before. So what we had written, can, Becky, can you scroll back up to that yeah, yeah. Um, first page, please? Um, yeah. So what we had written was, it said that we that the employee had to provide a negative antigen test, but it was didn't say anything about the ten day right. if they were returning to work within the 10, 10 day period. But, right, it just right? said that it was a negative antigen test was result was required to return to work. All right. Um, I thought that was only for people who were symptomatic not, and were wondering whether they had COVID, but not for people who had tested positive already. Can you clarify? It was for both. It was for people who test, did, I believe, I, uh, at least on the vaccinated, it's for people who tested positive. You are I, fully I vaccinated. I see on the next to the last bulleted item. In it's four negative. or five. Um, or third to the last, if you have symptoms and test positive, complete a 10 day period that should be updated to five if it's gonna comply with DPH. Return to um, work only after 10 days have Arlene, passed. It, we have the current policy on the screen. I think you're reading an older one. Oh, sorry, one. I'm reading the 1221 one. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so this is um, the 12, I mean, January 4th one that with your edits in it. Okay, sorry. So that's, <clears throat> um, can you go to number four and just the third bullet, fully vaccinated, should be asymptomatic and test negative, you should return to work, is it fully vaccinated? I think this was test, this one was symptomatic and test positive. This was symptomatic and test negative. Okay. Okay. Symptomatic. You, you could be you could be symptomatic and just really have a cold, right? Isn't that right? Yeah. The symptoms right. are not okay. that. Okay, so that's what we were talking about. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss it. Um, okay, so every so we're gonna we would remove providing the negative antigen test both for um for fully vaccinated right yeah okay and then if you were unvaccinated it's the same you don't have to provide the negative antigen test right can i just get us some clarification from arlene like the um the the number four the fourth bullet there it says return to work when your symptoms are minimal. From what I gather from what you were saying, if you have a fever, that's not considered minimal, right? right. Should we put the word fever in there somewhere? Yeah, you should, the criteria I use that I've trained to use is um, no fever in the preceding 24 hours without the help of fever reducing medications. Well, there you go. 
<laughs> that answers that question very succinctly. There, there you go. It's beautiful. We have that. Here we have a previous. <clears throat> you have had no fever in 20 without using fever reduction. Yes. You have. Oops, where it which bullet is it? It was up up, up above. Yeah, you're on it. You're on the right one. Is it this? Right there. Yep. Yeah. Return to work when your symptoms are minimal, including, or I don't know how you want to say it, but or is that oh, would include or wrong. and and you have had no fever, I guess you'd say, right? I don't know. If if I can suggest rather than saying symptoms are minimal, what I am told is to convey to, is um, when you've had the no fever for 24 hours and so forth, um, and your symptoms have substantially improved or this are is, resolved. This is the bullet for negative though. This isn't talking about COVID. This is just ill in general. Uh, I see, got it. Yeah, yep. So uh, symptoms may be improved. Okay. You know, because um, mm -hmm. we're not talking about COVID at that particular right. bullet. Right, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to confuse those that are reading. <laughs> <laughs> no, believe me. Um, oh, I had no fever in the next yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, this is duplicating that, right? Yes. And this is just a stray. Okay, return to work when your symptoms have improved and say, and you have had no fever for at least 24 hours without the use of a fever reducing medication. And that, as, as Melissa said, that's okay if you test negative to have that sentence in there? If we test negative, that's, this is the negative one, Becky, where they could have just a cold, they could have allergies, mm -hmm. they could have whatever else. So do we wanna have the fever requirement if they're not a negative for COVID? Good question. Didn't come the to question. work with a fever anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, no one should go to work with a fever. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I think that's, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it's okay to leave in there because somebody okay. shouldn't be coming to work. Yes. I agree. <laughs> Having okay. worked through many of them myself. <laughs> <laughs> I see I to... <laughs> <laughs> we'll never tell. Well, it's, you know, for, for 17 years in admission, I, didn't call out sick much. Too busy. Um, COVID, you know, no one gave you the permission to stay home. Now we have permission to stay home. <laughs> you know. So. Okay, so we, so we added down under five, then we added, if you do get COVID, the weekly PCR COVID test do not have to be taken for 90 days. And um, Arlene, do you think that's okay? I that was, I was talking with Melissa, and I think that's is that what it is at Amherst College? Because which is um, that if if you have had COVID, mm -hmm. that you don't um, because of the likelihood of a positive test. Um, right. You're so Amherst College pulls us out for thirty days, but that's okay. their that's theirs based on whatever evidence they have in the. Um, a million tests that they've done across the, the entire employees. It was 90 days. They just changed it to 30. I don't know what caused that change. Well, I think it's probably because the it's uh, the data around Omicron is uncertain. Um, yeah, you know, for how long does that one, when, when can one become reinfected with this right. Omicron um, variant circulating? Right. It's not fully answered yet. Yep, and that may be why they changed it to so they can see, you know. So, but, but I have it's a private employer, so they can make they can make what rules right. they'd like to. But they I can know about CDC, or they don't have to. <laughs> yep, I haven't heard the advisory on that change from DPH. They are still saying if you see a repeat positive uh, PCR within ninety days of the onset of a previous infection, don't count it as a new infection. Okay. That hasn't changed yet. Right. Oh. Right. Okay. So all the, the edits were made under um, section five regarding not requiring the negative antigen test prior to return to work. 
Well, no, they were. I removed them from oh. the vaccinated as well in the fourth. Uh, and removed them from the vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in both did, places. Did you want to take them out now, Becky? Since you're right there. Sure. Unhighlight that afterwards. I will say that um, this reduction from 10 to five days made by first the CDC and then adopted by MDPH, um, they are putting a, an emphasis on the masking after yeah. that five days, is mm -hmm. including in a household situation. I know that's not your purview, but because there is still this chance of transmiss transmission um, days six through 10, it is not zero. Um, and uh, masking 100% of the time around other people, including one's own household members is important in that regard. And the, the 95 family of masks is what is recommended. I just heard today that um, our man Bernie is once he wants the federal government to give everybody K95 masks. I think it's a great idea, but that's mm -hmm. what he's saying. Just I just mentioned yeah. it because I just was reading about mm -hmm. it. I've been um, I've been passing them out to department heads, um, making sure they all have enough. Okay, so how does this look, everyone? Is, is there any? I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Just Arlene, if you're, um, if we've done what we needed to do. Um, I agree with this. May, yes, maybe okay. in the summary where it says, and the very the summary, the second test, continue to wear a mask, it should say, you might use that word strict, <laughs> strictly wear a mask, and, and it should be a K95 mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. It Accord, but you know, according to CDC recommendations, you should wear a K95. Strictly wear a K95 or something. I don't know whatever. Oh, I don't know. I think Chris Kristen's trying to get in this meeting. I, I don't know if she just has a wrong meeting or not. Um, so I'm trying to edit this strictly. Sorry, strictly where this was I this is what Arlene sent me word for word. Yeah, and I what copied and pasted it out of the DPH guidance. Yeah. Yeah. St strictly wear a KN95 mask, right? Mm -hmm. 95 mask. That the totality of the change you wanted, Eric? I think so, unless you want to just say per CDC guidance or something, I, it doesn't matter to me if we do that, I guess, but that sort of maybe adds oh. a little more. And 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 MDPH, right? It's the Massachusetts Department of Public Health too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, that way we're not, we're not the total ogres. <laughs> and I hate to ask this question, but um, where where are we in terms of town employees and this policy if you've gotten vaccinated? Are we still, is it, can you just go back up or repeat it? Employees still expected to wear KN95 masks um, in the town hall? I think we only had the KN95 requirement for unvaccinated. Unvaccinated, okay. Yeah, but everybody in town hall is wearing a KN95. Uh, well, we, yeah. at least- We might want to have it for everybody. Um, I think Kristen has a- Oh, there's she. Kristen, yeah. The Kristen, call. you can un unmute. Hi everyone, quick question. Um, so in regards to Becky, if you'll just scroll down to if um, you test positive. For unvaccinated? Yes. Okay. 
there a question just came up and I'm glad that I jumped on in the nick of time for this. So if you test positive for um, 19, stay at home for five days, five days starting when? Five days starting testing positive or five days starting from symptoms onset? Arlene, do you wanna make Yes, me? sure. Earlier in this document, above the summary, but there's a more detailed explanation for that in number five on the one, two, three, the fifth bullet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right, in the same. Um, right, five days have passed since the first day of symptoms. That's your day zero. Um, and uh, the next bullet down says, if you had no symptoms, you must isolate for five days using the date of your positive test as day zero. Oh, that's perfect. I'm sorry, I missed yeah. that portion mm -hmm. of it. I just wanted to make sure I had clarification. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Rita, did you have your question answered? Yes, yeah. Do we, do we wanna put that in that in the summary, that first thing, stay home four or five days, we wanna put in anything but what we just said about what the five days means well, or just, one, it, it says it above and that's enough. Well, it one says quick it, way to say it is stay home for five days from the first day of your symptoms or your test date, whichever came first. Perfect, that's what I'm talking I'm about. Sorry, I was letting Walter in. Could you repeat that? One more time from Get home for five days, counting from your first day of symptoms. Or your test date, whichever came first. Okay. Counting from your first day of symptoms or your test date, whichever came first. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Any other ideas or improvements? Uh, in, in that second one, do we want to say it's, it's right below the sentence you worked on? Do we want to mention that thing about no fever again? If you have no, I guess no symptoms says that, <laughs> including fever. I don't know whether you want, I don't know if, I just don't know whether you want to mention fever or not. That seems like that's well, a big thing. In the italicized <clears throat> statement, just below these three bullets. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. It, covers, yep. it, it covers that. <clears throat> it does. You're right. Thank God someone can read. <laughs> she also helped write it. <laughs> I know. Well, here, that's no, cheating. I, I copied and pasted it. <laughs> well, we really um, appreciate all the time you put into it, Arlene and Becky and yeah. and select board members because this yes. has been yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. And we, we may we may be doing this again. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll bet do, on that. <laughs> do, do I hear a motion to um, approve the COVID-19 employee policy as amended? I, so I, I, yeah, and I will second that. <clears throat> Either way, yeah, so any, moved, yes. Any further discussion? No. Um, so Becky, this will get uh, I'm gonna post tomorrow. it without your signatures. Okay. And then when I can get your signatures, that'll be great. Okay, okay, okay great. Um, no. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, Arlene, thanks, Kristen, for coming. You're more than welcome to stay. We're not, <laughs> we just have one more thing this evening, so. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Thanks, Arlene. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. That was, a, you've been a huge help. Yes. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we had um, just an unanticipated um, item tonight, and that is signing the grant agreement, Walter, for fire equipment. It's a state, state grant that we're getting from the Office of Public Safety and Security. Yeah, it's the federal fiscal year 2022 um, fire safety equipment grant. And it's about $10,000, is that right? $10,340.60, give or take. 
Okay, great. Give or take. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, any... Not 61 cents. That might be 62, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> and Walter, I didn't read um, all of this, but can you just tell us quickly again what- uh, Basically, this, this is the, the second year of a five-year grant cycle that they're doing this. Um, and there, there's a there's an approved equipment list. And this year was a very competitive grant where what was on the list also had priorities and they had a ratings. Um, so the possibility was you could get the grant but not get everything you asked for, not get all the money you asked for, depending on you know if it met met the higher requirements or not. Um, as it was, we were able to get everything that we requested fully funded. Um, I was just notified this, this afternoon that we got, that we were approved for the grant. Um, and now we just need to get this in, you know, time is somewhat of the essence, unfortunately, mm -hmm. on these because it, the grant has to be done and we have to receive the equipment and paid for it by June 30th. And with the way some certain things are being, um, you know, supply chains, I don't want to take advantage of every day possible to try to get it in and get things ordered. Sure. I think it, it qualified as an um, unanticipated uh, request. I, so. I appreciate that. Because I know even though you, you're voting on it now, it's going to be a day or so before you can get it signed. So um, that's why I was kind of pushing to get it tonight, if possible. Sure. OK. Um, questions? So do I hear a motion um, to execute the grant agreement for the fire safety equipment? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace O'Neill aye. Stalker aye. Carol aye. So we just need to get in there as soon as possible to sign it. Okay, I can come in. Yeah, I think it just, Rita, you're the only one that really has to sign it. It's, oh, okay. I can it's come in tomorrow. Standard morning. contract in castle form, pretty much like the last one, plus another another addi additional piece of paper that gives the scope of the work, the agreement between, you know, the town and the state, and, you know, just saying that we all understand this is our responsibilities. I think they ran into some problems last year, so they they really got very strict on how the things work this year. Okay. Uh, so I'll come in in the morning. And um, do you need us to come in to sign anything else? Uh, the warrants are ready for everyone. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. All From right. Last week. <laughs> last week. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, great. Anything else we needed to check in about? I would just call right. attention for the previous, the next meeting, that thing about Elaine, there's a letter from Elaine Paleo and that we should all be looking at, that's all. Did I have a response that? to give her, Eric. Oh, okay. Yep, and um, Elaine's waiting for us because I can't open her fire chief oh. meeting until we end this. Okay, all right. Okay, go, 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 go. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So, motion second. To adjourn. Second, <laughs> so moved. All right. all right, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Carol, I. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.